I didn't do that. First of all, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, this is a very difficult time. My thoughts and prayers are with the victims, which is the most important in this case, and something that we all need to be able to focus on. Um, there's lots of floating around on social media that we want to address, unfortunately. As the AG, it continues, this is his investigation. I'm not in liberty to comment, and I will not comment about his investigation. As much as we'd like to put out rumors and misinformation spreading the last couple of days, we will not talk about issues that would hurt this case and jeopardize the justice of these victims. Um, but I am here to answer any questions that you have for me that I need to answer. So please, with that, any questions, and please um, let me uh, try to pick you out as we go. So any questions? Yes, ma'am. Sure. We have an officer who has come forward and said that he came to you about four or five years ago saying that there was an issue with his stepdaughter. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, I can. The officer came to me, and it was actually about his stepdaughter. It was a discussion we had, and uh, through that discussion, he was uh, very upset about some inappropriate activity uh, with involving his wife and uh, possibly a 14-year-old stepdaughter as well as Mr. Perkins' stepdaughter. Uh, he did not want to make a formal complaint. However, I still uh, questioned Mr. Perkins about it. Who denied those accusations? And there was nothing in there that was criminal, no reason to arrest him, uh, as well as I know a third party made the state police aware of this, who uh, basically I had a discussion with and agreed at that time there was nothing criminal, uh, so there was no um, formal investigation done, there was no criminal activity, uh, so that's where that stopped that. Sure. can you tell us why nothing was hey, in hey, his hey, file? One, sec hey, just one second, finish. Did it raise any suspicion for you as to the claim you were bringing forth? Well, any time you get a complaint, there is a suspicion, right? So you have to go through that, but at the end of the day, there is no crime committed, therefore no one is going to be arrested. And the rest of it is basically based off of what his, uh, his definition of being inappropriate might be. And again, this guy refused to file a complaint. Yes, sir, you had a question. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. Yes, sir, Sheriff. Chris Nakamoto with WBRZ. The investigative unit actually talked to that officer yesterday in an exclusive interview, and he's refuting a lot of the things you've said. Who should the public believe? Well, this is, this is, the, this is the thing. He's a law enforcement professional. And all law enforcement officers know one thing, and one thing for a fact. If you don't write it down, it didn't happen. He should be ashamed of himself well, why for not write reporting it down that. Let, me, let me finish my answer before you ask me another question. We're going to keep ordering here. Okay. So, again, he should have reported that. But he did have a discussion with me, and I took that upon myself to still do what I call a verbal investigation and question the deputy in question about this, who denied these accusations. So you did a verbal investigation and what didn't I said, write well, anything down? Let me down rephrase that. I, did a, I had a complaint. verbal conversation with him and asked him about these accusations, which he denied. So now you have his side and Mr. Perkins' side. So who should the public believe? Who should the public believe? I'm telling you what the truth is of the fact of the investigation. Let's rewind. To this, is not a, this is not about me in this offer. This is about some victims, which this thing has got refocused on something else that we shouldn't be focused on. We should be focused on these victims and the crime that's already occurred. But we're going to get all this stuff addressed so we can get on about and, and, and focus on what we need to be focused on. I guess the question is, is would there have been victims if your office took action in 2014 when that officer met with well, you? Christopher, you, you can't take action on a crime that has not occurred. And there was no down. crime. I am a law enforcement professional, 28 years in investigation. There was no crime. Louisiana State Police, there was no crime. Hey, look, I would love to have put Den uh, Dennis Perkins in jail a long time ago if, I'd have, if anybody would have known. I ask myself every day, how did this happen? We have deputies going around my office. How did this happen? We don't know. And if we did, it wouldn't have happened. But unfortunately, it did. And it's disgraceful that this guy would do something so unthinkable to these kids. In 2011, the investigative unit uncovered a restraining order was served to Dennis Perkins by your office. Your office received it and served it to him. Why does your office not have a record of it? 
we do have a record that there was a um, uh, paper served. We looked at that. You and I actually have had a discussion about this. Uh, I actually have a piece of paper here, and what actually goes to our civil office is this, this piece of paper. Uh, when you actually contacted me about these records, um, which I asked you so I can view them because they were unofficial records, uh, the reason I know that it was unofficial because those, those documents have been sealed. I can't get them. So I can't view that protective order. But we do see where it came through our office, through our civil process, and with thousands of other papers. And when it comes through there, it's stamped as received, and it was actually served to his attorney. So, yes, it did. But, unfortunately, it was not. Um, no one said anything to administrator. wasn't reported. So the deputy obviously missed it. He didn't see it, which is common. And in this order, it's wrote as Dennis Wallace Perkins, which he's not known by that. So I can see how it could have been missed. However, I'm not saying that's an excuse. That's the only thing we can come up with. But I do know this. There was no investigation. We have no record on file of anything being reported to the administration. The restraining order was sealed in 2015. In 2011, that's when it was served. There was, so there was a four-year window when that document was unsealed. So for four years, that restraining order was active. Yeah, the document and did come. And, and I just it. told you, the document came through. We wasn't aware of that. Whenever you brought it to my attention, it's been sealed. I couldn't see it. That's why I was asking you, can I see the official document? Are you changing procedures to make sure that copies of restraining all orders of our, are... All of our stuff, every one of these deputies do a, a, the best job they can do. I understand how things can be overlooked. I wish this wouldn't have been overlooked. I wish this would have been investigated. And however, at that time, I was not even employed to leave the spare sheriff's office. I was on a leave in absence. But I do believe that our former sheriff would have investigated this if it had been brought to his attention. It was not. And let's, let's also re be reminded of this. This incident uh, was occurred, occurred in Baton Rouge, where a report was, was made by a Baton Rouge officer and was not investigated because the victim said she did not want to investigate it. You have a question? Yes. Um, in the claim that Dennis Perkins was possibly having an affair with the officer's mm -hmm. wife at that time, they are claiming that that is so not the truth and they are appalled. Again, we're having a discussion about something that wasn't put on paper. Okay? I didn't fathom anything up. I'm telling you the chain of events that happened as I recall it and as I remember. Did the officer tell you that his wife at that time was having an affair with the with Dennis Perkins? His wife, I'm sorry, the officer at that time told me that it was a suspected affair. No, nothing was given me to prove that that was the case. Um, no phone calls, no nothing. It was what his feelings were. So the only reason I have commented on this is because the direct question was asked to me about this discussion, and that's why we're talking about this. This has nothing to do with the crime that has occurred. But again, we want, I want to put this to rest. We had that conversation. It was a discussion. He got up. He left. It was over with when he left. I took it upon myself to go ahead and ask those questions and make sure that did anything happen? Are you doing anything inappropriate? If you are, you better not let me find out because you will be dealt with. And sure, I guess the reason all this is coming forward, the claims that this officer brought forth, it, why they're so important, and I'm sure you realize, looks like the finger's pointed at you. Did the sheriff not do anything? Did the sheriff turn a blind eye when things were being reported to you about Dennis Perkins? Absolutely not. And this is my question about this, uh, this deal involving this officer's stepdaughter. Why hasn't the mother of that child come forward? Why has she not made a report? Has she turned this into anybody else? I understand that it was reported to the state police. Why haven't they arrested Dennis Perkins? Why didn't they arrest him five years ago? I understand that they are going to be re-looking re into the case. I want them to re-look into this case. And if he'd done something that wasn't brought to our attention back then, he should be arrested for it. He should go to jail for it, just like he did for this crime. Would you like to respond to the claims that Sheriff Carter turned a blind eye? I've never turned a blind eye. I have worked at this office for 28 years. I've put more than my share of police officers in jail, and I have used this same comment. It is a sad day when you do that, because when you do that, you're putting someone in jail that you uphold to a high standard, a very high standard. And when you get portrayed by that person, it hurts. You have an office that hurts. And this guy portrayed us. 
He's not supposed to do these kind of things. He's supposed to be trusted in our community. And now he has basically betrayed us again. I keep saying that word because that is what happened. So it is a sad day when this kind of incident happened. And then, you know, and you've got to think about the victims. It's sad for them to have to go through that. You can only imagine what their family's going through. Have you, you just... had any claims come forward from anybody else in the public on Dennis Perkins over the years? No, we've had no, um, I have no record of any type of um, incident involving in Perkins. When you look in this file, all Perkins has ever done at this office is promote. Where you said a second ago that the woman. Hang, hang on, hang on. When will those files be released? What files? Uh, actually, that is going to be released today. Yes, it will be released today. Thank you. You, you said a question. second ago that the girl's mother didn't come forward and file a report, but her stepfather came and met with you. So were you saying that victims of sexual abuse or alleged sexual abuse? No, see, now, 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 you, now you're trying to psychology? make up stuff again. I'm not making I, that's, up that's, stuff. That's no, what you said. No, I did say that. He is not... the the biological father of that child. But it doesn't but matter if he had allegations of inappropriate He did, and, and, but he didn't do a formal uh, complaint, Chris. That meeting he, with you, he says, was the formal complaint, and you didn't write and anything And I took down. that, and I did take action. I spoke to him. I had a conversation with Perkins. But, put nothing but I can't do interviews on the child, right? Can't do interviews on her because it wasn't a formal complaint. You have to be able to take these chil children and you have to do a certain type of interview. There's a lot in these investigations. That's why you don't know a lot of it because we usually don't talk about these type of crimes because what he did, and he should be ashamed of himself, because you know as a law enforcement officer what you do not do is you don't ever identify that victim. And he should have never identified his stepdaughter. If that, is, that, 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 is, that is just a disgrace to the badge that you would identify a victim like that. And he would contend that you not doing anything about it is a disgrace to the badge as well. Back to the restraining uh, no, order. Excuse me. We're, we're not, we're not going to have that kind of conversation. Sir, you have a question? Um, Sheriff, just maybe tell us how this whole case has affected your office, um, because it seems to, to point out um, maybe some deficiencies in, in the process of determining um, whether this um, officer was fit for duty and how that reflects on the department and how that reflects on your sheriff. That's a whole lot of questions at one time, but I'll do the best I can. Um, you know, obviously this is, this is and I said uh, earlier, this is very hurtful to us. Um, you have a lot of people that are walking around saying, you know, how, how do we not know? Um, and that's common because, you know, we are the guys we're supposed to pick out people like this. So it's, it's you know, it's, I don't know. I can't answer that question. I, I don't know how we didn't know. And uh, so, and again, if we'd had any indication at all, that this guy was going to do this type of crime, he'd have been dealt with himself. If this, if this actual report would have came through us, I'm very confident what I would have did with this investigation, and he'd be just where he is today. Um, my guys were the ones that went with the AG's office um, up to North Louisiana to make sure we put him in handcuffs to bring him back and terminate him as soon as we were able to get in touch with him. You know, this is, this is again, disgraceful. Now, when you talk about his background, there's nothing in his background. All he did was promote uh, in this office. So we had no signs of him possibly going to be doing anything to some child because I can tell you it would have been dealt with. And it's hurtful to me that we even have in this conversation again when we should be focused on the victims, the victims that have went through such a harsh, unthinkable crime and making sure we get them justice and focus on the case and the crime itself. Final question. So, can you tell us more about your relationship with Dennis Perkins? I have not no official complaint, but I was told that there was complaint um, uh, we trying to verify, and that complaint was on this incident that involved this officer, the same incident, and it was actually closed and found uh, and um, was unfounded. Uh, no, no uh, crime occurred and no inappropriate activity occurred, according to DCFS. Now, I haven't read the report. That's completely uh, from my investigators having a conversation, and that was brought to us. Other than that, I have no um, official report. And DCFS is going to be very careful of releasing any information. Again, y'all understand, we're talking about kids of juvenile age here, which is a very, very um, confidential type investigation. As the sheriff, speak, can you talk to the victim's families? Obviously, it's children who Look, don't know who they are, but they're probably watching. What do you uh, say to the victim's families? Look. My heart goes out to them. I'm a, I'm a father, and I can't even begin to imagine what they have to be going through. 
this is a very hurtful situation for them. And it's my job as a sheriff to make sure that we uh, do everything we can to assist the attorney general, which we have been doing and we will continue to do, to continue to, to do, to make sure that Dennis Perkins and his wife get um, what they got coming to them. That they, that's, this is a monstrous act, a monstrous act that they would do upon these kids what they have done. Right now we know there's a child involved. It may be other children involved. We don't know. But at the end of the day, that's my job as sheriff, is to help these uh, victims get justice. And it will be done. It will be done. If you could say anything to Dennis Perkins, what would you say? I don't want to talk to Dennis Perkins right now. And I have nothing to say to him. Uh, Which? The report say that he was fired under the standard of conduct policy. So what are the parameters? Uh, yeah, explain. I'm, I know I'm not going to pick on your accent. <laughs> say that again, I please. I can talk a little slower. Um, so the records say that the standard of conduct policy is what he was terminated on the most recently. Mm -hmm. What are the parameters of that? Like, if there has been official complaints, is that something, or does it have to be? Like well, when you have an when you have an official complaint, even if you have an official complaint on file, everything's allegations, and so even then, when you do a criminal investigation, if I arrest someone. Uh, for doing any any crime, I still have to go through that investigation and make sure that the allegations are true, right. or at least they're factual. And so that is a, a broad um, um, policy, but he was terminated, obviously, for the acts that uh, he occurred. He has warrants on him. I've seen enough with my own eyes looking through that file of the Attorney General to know that he needed to be terminated immediately. Okay, that was my question. And he needed to be put in jail, so um, again, that's, that's why he's where he's at. Can you tell the public about your relationship between Dennis Perkins and yourself? How do y'all know each other? Y'all went to high school uh, Yeah, I, I will answer that question, and we'll, we'll end with that, if you don't mind. Look, um, I know a lot of people has talked about the comment I made about friends and family. Let me tell you something. Everybody that works for me does usually is a friend, and they are considered an LPSO family member. And, you know, and he, he was. But he betrayed us. He is a criminal. He did criminal acts is what he did. And so... Um, I have a relationship with all of my deputies, and so th this is, again, this is a, uh, a time of betrayal to my office. This is someone we had high respect for, high regards for. He wouldn't have been where he was at. He was a lieutenant at my office. He was someone that not only me, but a lot of people in the community trusted, and that's what we try to do each and every day is we go out here, we serve and protect our community because people trust us, and they will continue to trust us. I am their sheriff, I will continue to be their sheriff, and we'll continue to do our job like we do each and every day. Uh, this guy um, was a friend, and right now, he is a criminal. And I am ashamed of what he did, and he should be ashamed of what he did too. It's a very harsh act, what he did. And again, I want to talk about the victims and what this thing is really about, and I hope that after today that we can refocus on that and make sure that that who gets the attention that is needed. And I truly appreciate your time, and thank you for coming out and giving me the opportunity um, to, give, to give my message out to everybody. So thank you.